I promise to do my best to not have my face only on the screen when I'm doing stuff with Flora today. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, last day of waveforms. So we got a good technique for you today. It's actually going to involve not so much just the animation technique, but it's also going to be like, how do I set up my design files? How do I work? with these things in order to do this kind of tracing that we're gonna to need to do today. And we're gonna actually look at an animation, import it into Flow, re-export it, and then use that uh, in a design tool in order to help us sort of expedite some of the, the animated stuff that we wanna do. Okay, so um, let's switch on over. Here we go, output this one. So we're looking at this uh, little icon by Alexei Grigorov. And here we have something that kind of looks like a standing wave. It's not the same idea. It's not moving along like our other one. So our other one, we were sort of like tracing and moving it along. This one is just staying in put and it's going up and down. So a lot like the animations that we had where they were, they were sort of going up and down and we were randomizing those things earlier in the week. We're sort of now kind of combining a single line animation and this bar graph -y kind of thing all at the same time. Okay, so how do we go and make something like this? Well, there's a couple of tricks that I end up doing and uh, I'm just gonna right click on this, okay? And I am going to save the image as, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. Uh, whoa, what is that? Woohoo! Uh, I'm going to save it to my desktop just like this and hit enter. And now we have this icon GIF. Okay. And I will actually want to extract some of these frames out of it. So what I'm going to do, all right, and just because it's convenient and easy, <laughs> I'm going to open this thing in flow. Let's go like this. Let's, uh, let's make it like this. Let's go like this. And we're going to create an empty timeline. We're going to say it is, and let's go and make it 400 by 400. And we press Command I, and we're going to grab that GIF. We're going to import it, and we're just going to wait. There you go. Flow goes and creates that whole thing for us. And what can we see? We can see that it is that whole animation is actually four and a half seconds long okay and if we actually go to finder and we double click on the gif itself you can see that there's there's 150 frames so 150 over 400 uh, we don't need all of those but what we can do we're going to go back to flow here and we're gonna export something. So let's go and let's just make this. So uh, da, 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 what I wanna do is I wanna just look at uh, like where these positions are. If I zoom really f close in, okay, you can see that there's sort of every third of a second, every three tenths of a second. So what I'm gonna do, I, I'm just going to make this 1.5. We're just making it super short and we're gonna scale that down. Now our frames are every 10th of a second, okay? And we will go and say, file, export, PNG sequence. We're gonna create a new folder. And we're just gonna wait for this to happen. There we go. <laughs> We're going to create a new folder called frames. We're going to hit enter and we're going to reduce this to 10 frames per second. And we are going to hit export. There we go. We're going to look at our frames now. And there we go. We got about 15 different frames. Something like that. And now what we can do, uh, and so you can have the frames per second be higher uh, and you'll just get more frames, more frames for you to choose from. So now what I do, 
And this is actually a really nice technique. It's a little bit easier to do this um, in a design tool just for the convenience of for the convenience of when you create, when you import your design from the design tool, you can import it and you can import all these frames. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you the basic technique here. I'm gonna do maybe one or two of them. And then I'm gonna like, like a cooking show, magically go over to the stove that already has the animation cooked up inside of it and we'll import from that. Okay, but when you import a design from a design tool like Sketch or Flow or Figma, Right, you are able to set the frames for whichever artboard you're importing. And we're gonna do that. And that lets us mix and match these different, these different designs, okay? So this is why we're doing it with the design tool today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cr just create an artboard, okay? I'm uh, in Sketch, I'm creating an artboard. We want our animations to be, let's say, we're gonna make them 400 by 400 like that. And now I'm gonna press Command-1 and I am going to I am going to go and grab my frames. I'm going to grab all of those. And I'm going to bring those into Sketch just like that. Okay. And I'm going to close this out and make that full screen for now. And now with all of those selected, I'm just going to move them right into the middle of that animation right there. All right. So now this part doesn't really matter, like which one you're going to do it with first, but what I plan to do is I want to find one that has a ton of peaks in it. There, this one is easy. Okay. And I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to animate, or I'm not going to animate. I'm just going to create a line and I'm just, just going to draw it like this, something like that. Um, and then let's just say, let's say it's 300 and its position is 200. Oh, it's not quite the center. I think this whole icon is off by a little bit, but that's okay. Let's do something like that. What we can also do is, yeah, we can just align our line to that center point right there. That's just fine. It doesn't need to be super precise. What we're looking for is we're looking for peaks and I'm going to go into path editing mode by double clicking. I'm gonna press escape. And now for every single peak, I'm going to add a point just like that. So there's a peak right here. I'm going to add a point, add a point, add a point, add a point. And I'm just going to go across the entire shape like this, adding points. So we're just setting up the path. And this is going to enable us to do um, some nice little tricky tracing with different artboards. OK, so we got that there and that there. And now what we can do is we can bring this one back. Uh, we're just gonna bring the whole thing back a tiny little bit. We're gonna make sure that it is centered. Well, if it's at um, the X position here should be, well, if it's centered right in the scene, it should be centered like that, something like that. Okay, well, that doesn't really matter because we can always center the thing afterwards. I think maybe, yes, maybe the, the icon itself is off by a little bit. So let's just make, let's make the artboard a little bit smaller here like this, just so that it's tight to the icon and we can do our animating that way. And then we'll bring it out just like this. Okay, so that icon looks like it's 240 by 240. And then this line here is 220 wide. Height mode, da -da, that's fine. And if it's 220 and that's 240, this should be at 10. There we go. All right, so that line is centered. And this should be 120, just like this. There we go. And again, it doesn't really matter because what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all those points and we are going to distribute them so that they have e even spacing. And then, okay, our line is set up. 
let's make it uh, a brighter color just so that we can see it just like this and now what we're going to do is we're going to start tracing okay so this is going to come down this one's going to go up this one's going to come down like that hmm interesting maybe maybe this needs to come in a little bit more like tight like that and this in a little bit tighter like that because it looks like our points are just a little bit off let's go distribute one more time that looks a little bit more accurate there we go okay so this one uh that's no good i destroyed that line there that shape we're going to open the path it just ended up closing it there for a second let's go like this let's do that one more time and now we can do this okay cool we bring that down and all we're doing here is we're just making sure that this little pink line okay is in it just sort of in the center of that white line because later on in flow we can actually go and play with the we can play with the line widths and things like this we can do all that stuff in flow here we're just setting up the basic shapes all right and then we're going to go like this we're going to go like this bring this one down like that bring you up bring you down up down and this can end up actually being a little bit tedious but this kind of animation I mentioned yesterday isn't the easiest one to go ahead and create dynamically S or create just like with an animation tool. Usually this kind of animation is done dynamically with software and like uh, and reading data in real time. So it can if you're going to craft something like this, it can actually be end up being a bit tedious. But that said, it really doesn't take a ton of time. OK, so here is the nice the nice trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that artboard. I'm going to duplicate that artboard, bring it over here, and I'm going to turn off that last that last one. See? And now we have all our points in a different position. What we're going to do, we're going to do something like select all of these and uh, we're going to align them down. Uh, we're going to align them up. Now with the last point, and we're just going to move them back up into position, sort of like that. And now we can go ahead and we can just tweak all these other little ones. So this one, I don't know, it comes down just by a point. This goes up by a tiny little bit or something like that. And then this one is kind of come up and then this one is kind of like that and this one comes down just like this and i'm going to do this technique over and over again until i have all my frames in place all right so just doing this moving bringing it down and bringing it down okay so again the next step here would be duplicate that artboard Duplicate that artboard just like that. Turn off the image that we just animated. Trace again. Okay. So now what we're going to do, so I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. I am going to open up my finder window. I'm going to go into my documents because I have a couple of files for you to look at uh, we're just going to delete this one and this is what I have been working on uh, just before the podcast or just before the, the flowcast today see so we have all of these frames so I created uh, I created eight frames and we have one these eight frames just like that right and you know what I could do is I could go um, and create more if I wanted to but I don't really need to this is going to give us a sample enough to um, to really get a sense of how to make this waveform. OK, so I have my artboards. I duplicated them. I have traced them. And now what I want is I'm just going to reduplicate this file. OK, because it has all these images in it and I don't want to import those images into flow. 
I don't need them. All I need is the shapes. So I'm going to call this one waveform clean. And I'm just going to go for every artboard. I'm just going to delete all of these images. I could have deleted them along the way, but I decided not to just because I wanted to show this concept again and again and again and again. So we're just getting rid of everything. We're cleaning up all of our animations. Uh, cl sorry, cleaning up all of our artboards so that we only have our shapes, something like that. Okay, and now I'm going to press save. We're going to save that to the desktop. And now it's time to animate flow. I'm going to delete. We're going to close that. Do -do -do. Create a new project. We're going to link a sketch file. And we're going to grab that clean sketch file just like that. And you see how I have all the artboards? And this is what I was getting to when I was talking about um, the convenience of doing it in another tool. Okay. So we have all our artboards and we're creating our animation from the sketch file. You can do this from Figma as well. I just have sketch open. Now I can mix and match all of the different artboards really quickly to make my animation rather than doing all of this sort of manually in flow. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to randomly pick a bunch of these guys, something like that. This one, this one, maybe now this one, and then this one, and 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 this one. <laughs> and this one again and this one again and maybe now we go to here and then to here and then to here and you see all these artboards that I'm creating I'm just I'm just putting tons and tons of them in I think that there's 20 in there now and I'm just going to hit add and now we have this super long animation you can see a little bit of jittering but that's okay we don't really need to worry about that for now because each state here isn't going to be a second long all right, so our animation is actually, check that out, it's 15 seconds long. So there was uh, there was 15 frames in there, 16 technically. The beginning and the end of the, our, our frames as well. Um, what I'm going to do now, and just like we did before, we talked about before, is you want the beginning and the end to be identical. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to put them over here at 16 seconds, just like that. Ooh! And they are identical. Ah, good. Okay, I'm just going to press undo. I didn't think that uh, I'd had that. But yes, the first and the last one are identical. So now we're going to be able to loop over top. And let's go ahead and make this whole thing. Let's compress it down to, let's try three seconds. And we're going to scale that all down. Now, there's our base animation. Okay, just like that. Still a bit slow. Let's make it 1.5 seconds. 15 frames, 1.5 seconds, a frame every tenth of a second, more or less. Okay. And do do do. Let's zoom that animation out a little bit. Again, I like to go like this. I like to make them all these outs. Okay, just like that. So you're getting this jittery thing at the end here, which is okay. Watch. So right here, you're getting this little bit of a jitter. Like the end is kind of jittery. That's all right. Over here, the end is a little bit, um, a little bit jittery as well. So how do you get rid of that? Well, perception. We don't actually need to see the endpoints. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out. We're going to grab that artboard. We're going to change its background color to the same color as that line. Then we are going to insert a layer. We're going to make that layer's background color white. Uh, I created an animation there. We don't want that. Delete the first value. Turn on relative mode. Select that layer again and then make its opacity 100%. Oops. Uh, make the background opacity color 100% like that. Okay, so it is white. We're going to drop that underneath the line so we can see the line. 
and we're going to scale this thing out just like this. So right to about there. Okay, so it's close to 200. Let's make it 200. We're going to clip the corner. We're going to clip those edges. All right, so we're uh, 200. There we go. So we're kind of clipping those jittery edges that are out there. Totally fine. All right, you don't need to see them. And now we're going to make the radius of this one 100. So it makes it a perfectly clean circle. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to select that line. And I am going to make its stroke width a little bit thicker. Six, seven, oh, let's make it six, something like that. And here's our animation. Boom, just like that. And then we can do something like this. Okay. There you go. Easy. <laughs> And I think I didn't do any mess ups with uh, the mouse cursor, I think. Yeah, no, no mess ups with the mouse cursor, no mess ups with you just staring at my face while I was doing a bunch of animation work today. Um, and we showed you some new techniques. So fundamentally, this technique is not that hard to do. It's just changing points. But what we also showed or what we also walked through was like, if you're gonna do a trace like this and you're gonna do some sort of randomization, it is actually really convenient to use Flow's ability to extract the frames and then re-export those. So we just exported them into something rather than pulling them out of the GIF one at a time. We just generated our own image sequence. We brought that image sequence into our design tool, did all the tracing there, and then imported and randomized the order. We, so we had eight, I think we had eight um, artboards, but we, we made 16 frames. We made the first frame, the last frame, and all the ones in between. And so we get this nice effect going between all of the different uh, states of the animation. And then from there, um, we just tweak the aesthetic so that you don't see the sort of like jitteriness on the, on the edges of the animation. And that's, that's it, okay? So a uh, really interesting week of doing waveform animations, which are not always super straightforward in how to produce. Um, and I'm looking forward to making more episodes, okay? We will talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. And episode 50, awesome. Uh, 50, 50, something like that. <laughs> We've done 50 of these now. And hopefully you're learning lots. Ciao.